Consider this. Every time you add an object to your Amazon S3 bucket, you want to trigger your Lambda function and then output the object type to Amazon CloudWatch logs. And on top of it, you don't want to write any code from scratch. Is it even possible? Let's find out. Let's start by navigating to the S3 service, then click on create bucket and give it a name. I'm going to call my bucket gokshadb-test-bucket and leave all the other settings to their default values. Then hit the create bucket button. As you can see, my bucket was successfully created in the US East 1 region. Next, let's head to the Lambda service, then click on create function. Since we don't want to write the code from scratch, I'm going to select use a blueprint. Using a blueprint allows you to build your Lambda application from sample code and configuration for common use cases. For blueprint name, I'm going to select the Python version of get S3 object. Next, give your function a name and choose create a new execution role from AWS policy templates. Give your execution role a name and make sure S3 object read only permissions policy is selected. If you scroll down to the Lambda function code, you should see the sample code that comes with the blueprint. We're going to review it later. Head to the S3 trigger section and select the S3 bucket that we just created as your event source. Next, select the event types that should trigger your Lambda function. I'm going to leave it to all object create events. If you wanted to limit the notifications to objects with keys with starting or ending matching characters, you could specify a prefix or a suffix. I'm going to leave them blank for this example. Next, acknowledge the recursive invocation warning and hit the create function button. This is interesting. Even though our Lambda function was successfully created, AWS ran into an error while creating the S3 trigger, which is fine because we can create our own trigger. Let's start by clicking on add trigger, then choose S3 from the source dropdown. Select the test bucket that we created earlier, leave all the other settings to their default values, then hit add. Looks like this time, our S3 trigger was successfully created. Navigate to the code tab, then scroll down to the code source section. Here, inside the lambda handler method, I'm going to add a bunch of print statements for the bucket name, object key name, and the S3 response. This reminds me that we need to upload a file to our test S3 bucket. I'm going to upload a file called note.txt with some sample text. Head back to the Lambda tab and click on the test button and give your test event a name. Next, let's copy the S3 put template into a text editor so we can update the bucket name and the object key name. If you look at the line 14 of your code, you will notice that the bucket name is being sourced from the first element of the event records array, which is at index zero, followed by S3, bucket, and then name. Let's update the bucket name to gokshadb-test-bucket. Similarly, I'm going to update the object key name to node.txt. Let's copy paste the updated JSON template back into the test event window, then hit the execute button. I don't see my print statements in the execution logs, which means my changes were not deployed. Hit the deploy button, then click on test again. Okay, this time I see my bucket name, object key name, and S3 response in the execution logs. Next, let's head back to the S3 console and upload a new node.txt file to see if it triggers our Lambda function or not. Looks like the new node.txt file was successfully uploaded. Head back to the Lambda console, then navigate to the Monitor tab. Click on View CloudWatch Logs, 
then go inside the latest log stream. Looks like our lambda function was successfully triggered by the S3 upload. And we can see the bucket name, key name, S3 response, and even the content type successfully printed in the log. There you have it. But before you go, here's a question for you. Why did the lambda function break up with the other functions?